the first station. The empty tomb is discovered. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And where is Jesus this strange Easter day? Not lost in our locked churches, any more than he was sealed in that dark sepulchre. The locks are loosed, the stone is rolled away, and he is up and risen long before, alive at large, and making his strong way into the world he gave his life to save. No need to seek him in his empty grave. He might have been a wafer in the hands of priests this day, or music from the lips of red-robed choristers. Instead he slips away from church, shakes off our linen bands to don his apron with a nurse. He grips and lifts a stretcher, soothes with gentle hands the frail flesh of the dying, gives them hope, breathes with the breathless, lends them strength to cope. On Thursday we applauded, for he came and served us in a thousand names and faces, mopping our sick-room floors and catching traces of that virus which was death to him. Good Friday happened in a thousand places, where Jesus held the helpless, died with them, that they might share his Easter in their need. Now they are risen with him, risen indeed. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For in your resurrection the power of love breaks open the earth and frees life from death. As the angel rolled away the stone from the prison of the tomb, so release those imprisoned by life's misfortunes. To you, Lord Jesus, whose life brings surprises beyond our wildest expectations, the honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Second Station Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. He blesses every love which weeps and grieves, and now he blesses hers, who stood and wept and would not be consoled, or leave her love's last touching place, but watched as low light crept up from the east. 
A sound behind her stirs a scatter of bright bird song through the air. She turns, but cannot focus through her tears or recognize the gardener standing there. She hardly hears his gentle question, Why? Why are you weeping? Or sees the play of light that brightens as she chokes out her reply, They took my love away. My day is night. And then she hears her name. She hears love say the word that turns her night and ours to day. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory, for the love which drew Mary Magdalene to your tomb to weep over your death. As you broke into her grief with your death-shattering life, so reach into our broken hearts with your promise of hope. To you, Lord Jesus, reaching into the deepest tombs of our despair, we honour and glory, now and for ever. Amen. The third station. The risen Jesus greets his disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. We bolted every door but even so we couldn't catch our breath for very fear. Fear of their knocking at the gate below. Fear that they'd find and kill us even here. Though Mary's tale had quickened all our hearts, each fleeting hope just deepens the despair. The panic grips again, the gasping starts, the drowning and the coming up for air. Then suddenly, a different atmosphere, a clarity of light, a strange release, and all unlooked for, Christ himself was there, love in his eyes and on his lips, our peace. So now we breathe again, sent forth, forgiven, to bring this breathless earth, a breath of heaven.
we praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For in your birth you are proclaimed the Prince of Peace, and in your resurrection you breathe into your people peace beyond this world's understanding. Be present, Lord, this day with those whose lives are disfigured by conflict, and those whose hearts know no peace. To you, Lord Jesus, true bringer of the peace of heaven, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The fourth station, Jesus appears on the road to Emmaus. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And do you ask what I am speaking of? Although you know the whole tale of my heart, its longing and its loss, its hopeless love, you walk beside me now and take my part as though a stranger, one who doesn't know the pit of disappointment, the despair, the jolts and shudders of my letting go, my aching for the one who isn't there. And yet you know my darkness from within. My cry of dereliction is your own. You bore the isolation of my sin alone, that I need never be alone. Now you reveal the meaning of my story, that I, who burn with shame, might blaze with glory. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For you are with us, even when our eyes are closed to your companionship. Walk this day alongside the disconsolate and the despairing. Open their eyes to your gentle illumination, and let their hearts burn within them at your invisible presence. To you, Lord Jesus, walking by our side, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The fifth station, Jesus is recognised in the breaking of bread. When Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. 
We thought that everything was lost and gone. Disaster on disaster overtook us. The night we left our Jesus all alone, and we were scattered, and our faith forsook us. But oh, that foul Friday proved far worse, for we had hoped that he had been the one, till crucifixion proved he was a curse, and on the cross our hopes were all undone. O foolish, foolish heart, why do you grieve? Here is good news and comfort to your soul. Open your mind to scripture and believe. He bore the curse for you to make you whole. The living God was numbered with the dead, that he might bring you life in broken bread. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For you reveal yourself in all fullness in the breaking of bread. Be with all those who still await your revelation, and with all who long at this time for your sacraments. For you, Lord Jesus, still nourishing us with your presence, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Sixth Station Jesus Appears to Thomas Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have come to believe. We do not know. How can we know the way? Courageous master of the awkward question, you spoke the words the others dared not say, and cutting through their evasion and abstraction. O oh, doubting Thomas, father of my faith, you put your finger on the nub of things, we cannot love some disembodied wraith, but flesh and blood must be our kings. Your teaching is to touch, embrace, anoint, feel after him and find him in the flesh. Because he loved your awkward counterpoint, the word has heard and granted you your wish. O oh, place my hand with yours, 
Help me divine the wounded God, whose wounds are healing mine. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory, for you come to us even in our doubting. Through the sovereign work of your Spirit and the loving hands of your people, continue to reveal yourself where doubt is stronger than faith. For you, Lord Jesus, whose resurrection body bears the murderous marks of the cross, the honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Seventh Station Jesus Appears at Lake Tiberias Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Back where we started, in my boat again, as though the last three years had never been as though the call, the care, the joy, the pain, the strange adventures that we shared were gone, all vanished with his body and our hope. I clutched these gunnels tightly on the day he came on board. We launched into the deep, and all the knots and nets of life gave way. But he is gone. And I have failed my watch. Even my old vocation fails me now. As some fool on the shore calls, How's the catch? And beckons from beyond our starboard bow. Unless, whose voice is that? Over the sea that calls, For all my faults, calls, Follow me.
We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For at the lakeside you showed concern for the daily needs of your disciples. As you guided them to fill their nets with fish, so guide all who are hungry till their hunger is satisfied in you. For you, Lord Jesus, sharing with us the food of faith, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Eighth Station Jesus commissioned Simon Peter. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Impulsive master of misunderstanding, you comfort me with all your big mistakes, jumping the ship before you make the landing, placing the bet before you know the stakes. I love the way you step out without knowing, the way you sometimes speak before you think, the way your broken faith is always growing, the way he holds you even when you sink. Born to a world that always tried to shame you, your shaky ego vulnerable to shame. I love the way that Jesus chose to name you before you knew how to deserve that name. And in the end, your Saviour let you prove that each denial is undone by love. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For even in the glorious victory of the resurrection, you understood the failure of Peter who denied you. As you restored him to relationship with you, remember all who feel downcast and worthless in this world's eyes, and give them a sense of purpose and value. To you, Lord Jesus, loving us despite our denial, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The ninth station, Jesus commissions the disciples. Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Your final words 
fulfill your ancient name, a promise hidden in Emmanuel, a promise that can never fade or fail. I will be with you till the end of time. I will be with you when you scale the height and with you when you fall to earth again, with you when you flourish in the light and with you through the shadow and the pain. Our God with us, you leave and yet remain risen and hidden with us everywhere, hidden and flowing in the wine we share, broken and hidden in the growing grain. Be with us till we know we are forgiven. Be with us here till we're with you in heaven. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory, for you took the risk of passing your mission to frail disciples. As you commissioned them to go into all the world, so may all the world come to you, the King of nations. To you, Lord Jesus, with us to the end of the age, the honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Tenth Station Jesus Ascends to Heaven While Jesus was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. We saw his light break through the cloud of glory, whilst we were rooted still in time and place. As earth became a part of heaven's story, and heaven opened to his human face. We saw him go, and yet we were not parted, he took us with him to the heart of things the heart that broke for all the broken-hearted is whole and heaven-centred now, and sings, sings in the strength that rises out of weakness, sings through the clouds that veil him from our sight, whilst we ourselves become his clouds of witness and sing the waning darkness into light his light in us, 
and ours in him concealed, which all creation waits to see revealed. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For in your ascension you are crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. As we worship you on your heavenly throne, prepare our hearts for the coming of your Spirit. To you, Lord Jesus, who will come back in the same way you went up into heaven, be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. The eleventh station, Jesus reveals himself to Saul. Now, as Saul was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? And the reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. An enemy whom God has made a friend, a righteous man discounting righteousness, last to believe and first for God to send. He found the fountain in the wilderness, thrown to the ground and raised at the same moment a prisoner who set his captors free, a naked man with love his only garment, a blinded man who helped the world to see, a Jew who had been perfect in the law, blesses the flesh of every other race and helps them see what the apostles saw, the glory of the Lord in Jesus' face. Strong in his weakness, joyful in his pains, and bound by love, he freed us from our chains.
We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For you transformed the murderous Saul into the great apostle Paul. As you revealed yourself to him on the road to Damascus, reveal yourself afresh to your people journeying through this life. To you, Lord Jesus, who can fill even the emptiest of lives, be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. The twelfth station, the Holy Spirit, descends on the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them ability. Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws breath at last and sings, as every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air, and water, poured out and breathed and kindled into earth. The earth herself awakens to her maker, and is translated out of death to birth. The right words come today in their right order, and every word spells freedom and release. Today the gospel crosses every border, all tongues are loosened by the Prince of Peace. Today the lost are found in his translation, whose mother tongue is love in every nation. We praise you and we bless you, our risen Lord Jesus, King of glory. For you promised that your disciples would be baptised with the Holy Spirit, and now we see the fulfilment of your promise. Fill us afresh with your Spirit today, revive your church, and renew the face of the earth. To you, Lord Jesus, giving to your people the greatest gift of all, the honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.